nothing like a cup of fresh chai latte to start a good video hello everyone and in today's video we're going to be talking about the shadow and bone trilogy series so first off can we just appreciate they are just stunning books. I gotta do, I gotta straight off the bat, like, come on. These things are beautiful. I just had to put that out there. So, I don't remember why I got this series. Never mind, I do. I got given the first book as a birthday present from one of my good friends, Shanna. Much love to her. Pretty sure she gave me this book. I don't know, so many of my friends have given me books over the years. But she gave me this one, I'm pretty sure she gave me this one thinking I would like it. And girl, was she correct. Shadow and Bone is written by, sorry if I pronounce this wrong, by Leah Bargango? Hi, I'm Leah Bargango. I don't know how to say it, but it's, it's written by Leah. She has written a bunch of other books that honestly, I actually don't own any of her other books. I don't really know what else she writes, but I know in this particular universe, or the Grittish verse is what she calls it, there's a bunch of other books in here, which is like the Six of Crows duology, the King of Scars duology, the Anthrologies, which I have one of those. And I have the King of Scars uh, duology and the Six of Crows duology, but I haven't read them yet. So you'll get that video later. But what else has she written, does it say? Because uh, sometimes it says like a little bit like about the author. Am I just blind? Can I not? Yeah. Um, she's written a lot of short stories apparently, but I think this is her main like best-selling book. So I'm pretty happy to hear that. I'm just trying to see. Yeah, I think she's only written those books in particular. So I almost own all of the books that she's written except for one, which I need to get, which is The Lives of Saints. So anyway, we're going to be talking about the Shadowburn trilogy. Holy shit. This book is beautiful. It is a fantasy young adult book and it sets you up on this past following Alina Starkov. It talks about what it's like for her to be a soldier, which I love. I love the whole military style of things. I love that it's a female soldier because typically women are not put in those particular roles so it's really nice to see that there's a woman in like a soldier ranking and she's not just like the eye candy that everyone looks for but anyway we follow along alina's journey becoming a well being a soldier and then basically finding out that her her rank or her regiment is what i call it i know it's wrong basically her group has been attacked by this particular type of I'm gonna say beings. I'm not really sure what you exactly call them, but beings in the Shadowfold. Shadowfold is a particular area that in all good, essentially. Um, also another thing, oh, I'm so all over the place. Another thing I wanna point out in these books, one of my favorite things that people do, especially when it comes to fantasy, is they have maps. I love having maps. So then if I'm confused, I'm like, okay, they're traveling from, this country to this country or from this town to this uh, side of the map how far is it roughly why do they have to go over xyz basically why do they have to do all these things and so i love it because this one not only does it have where but it has kind of designs bus um it has designs of not only what the places look like but some of the animals it has some of the different like emblems and crests and it has different little hints and design details which I just love and adore you can see also just the way they write things and oh it's beautiful and it has also who it was illustrated by which is Keith Thompson good on you um but yes the basically gets attacked by the shadow fold and Apparently, she's got some mystery hidden in within her that no one has seen in a while. Are we shocked? No, it's a fantasy series. Something good has to happen to her, otherwise there wouldn't be two other books. Anyway, basically, I'm going to read the blurb of this, the first book, and you're going to tell me from there if you like the sound of this book. 
The Kurdish verse, soldier summon a saint. Soldier is in yellow. Very good thing to discern because the others have, so like the second book has summoner in bold and saint is the third one in bold, which all give a bit of a detail as to what this book is more leaning towards. Alina Starkov is a soldier. When her group is attacked while crossing the Shadowfall, a swarm of unnatural darkness crawling with monsters, Alina unleashes dormant magic not even she knew she possessed. Now Aline will enter a lavish world of royalty and intrigue as she trains with the British, her country's magical military elite, and falls under the spell of the notorious leader, the Darkling. He believes Aline can summon a force capable of destroying the Shadowfold and reuniting their war-ravaged country, but only if she can manage her untamed gift. But as Aline unlocks the secret of her past, she will make a very dangerous discovery that could threaten all she loves in the very future of the nation. If you are a military nerd or fantasy kind of mixtures of royalty, you like the royal core stuff, this shit is for you. A little bit of magic, a little bit of flirting, a little bit of love of triangles and shapes, a little bit of soldiers and fighting and war and violence. This book series is for you. Now the first one, obviously there are some spoilers in this. Not as much, I'll kind of try and keep it very blank. But the first one talks more about like her and kind of introduces the characters and kind of brings in some of their dynamics as well as the flirtation, which is fantastic. The second one kind of talks more about her and her powers and how it's growing, but it kind of talks about all the things that she has to do and the prices she has to pay. This book I liked, the second one. I don't know, I feel like some parts were a bit, like if I had to say the first book was like, like an 8.5, right? This one kind of dropped to like a 7.5 at some points. Most of the time it's an 8.5, sometimes it was like, like it would dip a little bit. But I think it's just because the first one was so like jam-packed with awesomeness, it's really hard then to kind of keep that pace going. But this one kind of, still a great book, don't get me wrong. Um, it's kind of expected with second books, they just tend to happen like that unfortunately. But this one really talks about kind of the toss and turn between the Darkling and with Aline, and it even brings in a new character into play where there's also a art piece of him in here which I think is awesome and one of the actual cool things I like about this particular author is in the back of her books she has little Q&A's that she's done about the book but she's put it into the book which I think is really cool it gives you more insight on the author and I love when authors do those types of things as an aspiring author myself someone who I always like to kind of give my insight into things and so seeing other people do that really useful another thing i love about these books is that in the first couple of pages it talks about because she has her own type of army it gives you constant reminders on like the rankings or the orders so you've got technically three different sections and then it puts it on order of like rank so you never forget or if you do it's in the book and the map's always updated so you can see what's truly happening as the story progresses. It's just really well written. And the third one kind of talks about obviously the last fight and the big battle because the second one ends on a cliffhanger. The third one picks her right up and fucking runs with your emotions. Holy moly, what a good ending to the book. It just makes you go, oh, so good. I am, as you can see as well on these ones, it has a sticker saying that there's a Netflix original series on it. I haven't watched it yet. I'm going to give my review on it in a little bit now that I've read all the books. Because my mission was to read all the books before I watched the show. Now that I've done that, I'm going to compare. Is it anything like the books? Most of the time it's not, but I'm curious. Overall, I think if you're a person who again loves your royal court, loves your military, just D, D type of shit and it isn't too big of a book to read either 
This is kind of on their bigger sides compared to the last video that we did, which was on the um, Magistrum series. This book has about 350 pages each roughly. So again, not too big, but also if you struggle to read big books or bigger books, then this might be your end point in big books. But I would highly recommend reading these books. They're super amazing. I love them so much and I can't wait to make more book videos. As you can see, these are the books. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked it, let me know in the comments below. Let me know of other books you want me to talk about, discuss, recommend, or just anything involving the book universe. Thank you all, and I shall see you on the next page. <sighs> Bye.